Hey guys, Mikey 19 here and welcome to my second Q&A video. Many of you asked so many questions and I'm here to answer them for you. In that case, let's get started. Samuel Warwick asked four questions. The first one he asked, which season is your favorite season of fetch and which is your least? Every season of Fetch was really good, but if I were to vote for my favorite season, it will have to be season 3. There are so many favorite episodes slash challenges that I really loved for that season. The first one is Mr. Ruffman Goes to Washington. I loved that episode so much because it was fun seeing Sam become a senator for a day for late Senator Ted Kennedy. Another one of my favorite episodes was How Not to Impress a Poodle's Mother because I love the challenge where Jay became a hairstylist at a beauty salon. I think it was one of the weirdest and funniest challenges he ever experienced. He even got to do a makeover on his own mother which was embarrassing for him. And one of my all time favorite episodes from season 3 was the People vs. Grandma Ruffman. It was a fun challenge seeing DJ and Harsha as defense attorneys, Noel and Sam as prosecutors, and Jay and Sammy as DNA testers. And most of the WGBH staff were basically the judge and the jury. Even season two Fetcher Rosario made an appearance as a jury member. It was one of my all time favorite episodes and it looked like a very fun challenge. And finally, I can't forget about the finale. The episode where Ruff's twin brother Scruff takes over Fetch. All the elimination challenges dealt with Ruff and Scruff's childhood, such as a tennis ball retrieval challenge, a Chinese food organizer challenge, and building a windmill ball retrieval system. And of course, every Fetch season finale always includes the final fetch face-off where two fetchers go head-to-head -head answering questions on their challenges from the season. And the final challenges usually include a smell test, which toys sink and float, putting word blocks from the electromagnetic spectrum from lowest to highest energy, and building a boat that can hold the most candy. Jane Harsh's challenge was to build a cookie tower. At the end, Jay becomes the Fetch Grand Champion and takes his place next to Anna and Mike on the Wall of Fame. And he takes home a Ruff Ruffman Trophy as the grand prize. Season 3 has to be my all-time favorite season. All the Fetchers were pros, the challenges were interesting, and so many others. And Season 1 is my least favorite because the show just started and there weren't a lot of interesting challenges. Although my favorite episodes from that season include BLT for breakfast and this old lemonade stand. Those are just really good episodes. Anyways, moving on to your next question. Question two, which father is your favorite? My dad, who else? Question three, are you interested in Thomas and Friends at all? Not really. I never saw Thomas the Tank Engine growing up as a kid. I was never a fan of the show. I was mostly into Arthur, Barney, The Magic School Bus, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and Wishbone, and many other PBS kids shows in the 90s slash early 2000s. Although, I will admit, my favorite narrator from the Thomas franchise is the late George Carlin, hands down. Question 4. Did you know that the Fetch seasons were filmed a year before they aired on TV? I actually did knew that. Sean S. asks, What were your top 5 worst to best Spongebob episodes that aired in the week of July 12, 2016? I actually haven't seen those yet, but I did watch Saturday's new episode, Bulletin Board, and I gotta say, it was actually pretty good. But whenever I have a chance, I'll watch them and I'll give you my thoughts on them. James R. Rogers asks, 
Did you see a clip of Disney XD's new show, Milo Murphy's Law? Yes, I did. And I did watch the first episode that was leaked online early. And I gotta say, it was pretty good. But I can't do a review of that show just yet until more episodes have aired. Although, I'm very excited that Weird Al Yankovic is voicing the main character on this show. I'm a huge fan of his music. And he has lent his voice to many cartoons in this modern generation, such as My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Gravity Falls, Wander Over Yonder, and Wally Kazam. These are going to be the last questions. My good friend RuffmanFan882 asks four questions. The first one he asks is, what do you think of Girl Meets World's cancellation news slash rumors? Oh boy, here we go. Now guys, in case you don't know, there's been a major rumor going around since July that Girl Meets World might be canceled. In August, Peyton Myers stated in an interview that he took home the Matthews couch from the set. Now this could be a strong rumor that Girl Meets World is ending its run. But there are other rumors going around that are a bit crazy, that the cast aren't getting along and that they're going to replace the Girl Meets World cast with a much younger cast and it really doesn't make any sense because isn't Riley supposed to be in high school already? She's a teenager, so are her friends. It doesn't make any sense to make them young again. Michael Jacobs even doesn't want that to happen. I suggest they end the show after season 3 on Disney Channel and move the show to Freeform for season 4. Baby Daddy is already entering its sixth season. Could Girl Meets World reach that? Of course it can. We want to see the Girl Meets World gang graduate from high school. We want to see them enter college. We want to see Riley and Lucas get married and the whole gang moving on with their lives. That could be interesting for the show's future, but who knows what could happen? Moving on to your second question. Question 2. What do you think of Henry Danger's run so far? I think it's going pretty good. Season 3 just started like two weeks ago and it's off to a fantastic start. Question 3. Who would you like to see in Fuller House Season 2? Since Michelle is not coming back anytime soon, I definitely would like to see DJ and Kimmy's high school classmates. And we are, to be honest. I didn't mention this in my Fuller House review, because we didn't know at the time, but we're going to see Nelson, but he won't be played by Jason Marston. Instead, he's going to be played by Hal Sparks, who is best known for playing Davenport on Lab Rats. We're also going to be seeing Viper again, played by David Lipper. And we're also going to be seeing Dwayne, played by Scott Menville. So I'm very excited about that. And finally, question four. For Disney Channel besides Girl Meets World and Nickelodeon shows, what shows do you think are in danger of not being picked up for another season? For Disney Channel, the show in my opinion that could be cancelled is Best Friends Whenever. Now let me explain why. Now Best Friends Whenever has basically been rushing their episodes. Now for their second season, they only produced 13 episodes which isn't good. The ratings haven't been doing great as well. Plus, Michael B. Kaplan, who was the creator of Dog with a Blog, was an executive producer on Best Friends Whenever, and he left the show after its first season ended. It kind of reminds me of what happened with I Didn't Do It. That show got canceled after its second season because fans didn't like him where the show was going. I Didn't Do It went through a major show runner change in its second season. Show creators Todd Himmel and Josh Silverstein basically left the show after its first season ended and they were replaced by Good Luck Charlie co-creator Phil Baker. They even dropped the What Just Happened concept. The show just wasn't the same as it was in its first season and that's basically why the show was cancelled. So as for Best Friends Whenever that show is really in danger of being cancelled. Now, Liv and Maddie has basically been confirmed that it's ending its run after season 4. 
production has wrapped on the 15 episode season. So basically, there's nothing to say about this. The only thing I could say about Liv and Maddie is that Benjamin King, aka Pete Rooney, is no longer on the show. He was replaced by Liv and Maddie's little cousin, Ruby, played by Lauren Lindsay Donsies. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. Anyways, now let's get to Nickelodeon. The first show that's still up in the air is The Thundermans. Now, I mentioned in my second Nickelodeon rant that the show had 13 episodes for season 4. Well, not anymore. Most recently, Kiara Kosterin confirmed in a video that The Thundermans was picked up for an additional 13 more episodes bringing season 4's total to 26 episodes. By the end of season 4 and the series overall, that would take them to a grand total of 97 episodes, which is pretty dang amazing. It will be Nickelodeon's second longest live action show behind iCarly, which ran for 5 seasons and 109 episodes. But the show that may be in danger is Henry Danger, now, I love this show. Why is this show in danger? Well, basically, Sheldon Bailey, who plays Rootless on Game Shakers, said in an interview that Dan Schneider is developing a new pilot that is set to shoot in July of next year. Now, what does this mean for Henry Danger? It means that the show might be in its third and final season. And season three will have 20 episodes by the time season 3 ends. It will bring Henry Danger's total to 65 episodes. And Dan Schneider said that most of his shows run for 60 to 65 episodes with the exception of iCarly which had 109 episodes. Now, Nicky, Ricky, Dicky and Don. Nothing has been confirmed that they wrap production. They are currently filming their third season and plus they got picked up for additional episodes. I don't know how many though but it's most probably for 26 episodes. The actors have not said anything about news about the show but we'll see what happens. You'll never know. Now School of Rock, that show is doing okay. The show just started its second season but I'm not 100% sure about the show's fate. The cast just finished production on season 2 at the end of August and it will have 13 episodes. It would have been great if it got an additional episodes but it didn't unfortunately so that's pretty much what I have to say. So that concludes my second Q&A video but I might not be done just yet. If you guys want you guys could ask me more of your questions in the comments section of this video and I'll try to answer as many questions as possible in my next Q&A video. So until next time, I'm OneMikey19 and I'm signing out.